Thank you. Thank you. Henry, what are we even talking about on this show? Man, I have no idea. We're just going to make it up as we go along. Just another day at PB. Hello and welcome to another week of the Pink Bike Magazine show. Now, I know a little about branding and I think that you should never really change your brand. I think that that's sort of a settled truth. However, Big Mac got in the comments and suggested this show should be called Between Two Berms, <laughs> which is slightly fantastic. So we might have to pivot our key brand strategy and yeah, call it Between Two Berms. And that's just really made me laugh. This week, we are joined by Pink Bike Technical Editor, Mr. Matt Beer. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Henry. It's so cool to be here. This week, we're going to cover the news. We've actually got um, the Pink Bike Racing guys coming on later on. Most interesting thing this week, at least in my mind, is that new Da Vinci. Now, you've been lucky enough to swing a leg over it. Do you want to talk us through the bike a little bit? Yeah, so the new Da Vinci Chainsaw is sort of a medium-priced to entry-level aluminum park bike i would say mm. uh they have two configurations uh 29 170 front and rear or you can make the shock longer stroke with 180 uh run it with a dual crown fork at 190 and has mullet wheels so sort of like a downhill build and an enduro build yeah i mean in some ways i think this is the the existential threat that downhill bike lovers fear because it does seem quite versatile. It's that sort of, you know, sort of the Rocky Mountain Slayer, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Long Travel 29er, dual crown compatible. This bike's geometry is quite extreme, though. Um, it's obviously, you know, its name is a nod to Stevie Smith. I believe they're working with his mother to make sure that you yeah. know, the bike revenue yeah. does, does go into the, the, the his, you know, kind of foundation work, which is, is fantastic. But this bike, in its steepest mode, is still south of 63 degrees. Yeah, yeah, it's aggressive. And it's quite short. At, ba at, the, at the back to like the chain stay it's a high pivot so it starts short grows as it gets under the sag and yeah it's a it's a big weapon out there it's cool now i you know i think the geometry chart looks really cool you know we, we kind of do dip into a bit of consultancy work here at pink bike so we're going to jump from the news into pink bike consulting because i want to ask you a serious question as somebody you know you have you know had a successful racing career does a bike need to be good looking? I'm not saying this is a particularly ungood looking <laughs> bike, but I think okay. even Da Vinci would acknowledge there are probably sort of cleaner looking bikes out there. Do you think a bike needs to be good looking? No, I don't think it does, mm. but you are spending your hard earned dollars. Mm. So, you know, you definitely want to at least have a color or something that kind of yeah. matches what you it's, like. It's got some quite unique lines, I would say, going on. And that's yeah. sort of the way that the chain wraps underneath the stay probably accentuate some of those lines and maybe potentially in an unhelpful manner you know I, I do think this bike could position itself as actually and it sounds a bit unglamorous but if we talk about the bike park we talk about you know the sort of single crown 29 it positions itself to be a, just a really great rental bike which i know isn't the most exciting thing in the world but for a lot of people that's the only time they're going to ride a downhill bike yeah and so i think actually it could be quite important in that regard too now another thing to talk about you know on the homepage this week is your mud tire test that you had going on oh yeah now sometimes these tire <laughs> tests they are hugely tire time consuming and he said tire consuming they're, they're both <laughs> yes. they're very a lot goes into them so basically you got six mud tires which kind of you know i mean what a mud tire is within a brand is quite difficult to pin down now because let's face it at a race weekend no one's reaching for the wet screams they're going for the shorty even though you know and the people are going for the argotel yeah the hydrotel. yeah so you had six offerings for wet mud conditions. Can you talk us through a bit of your methodology for this test? Because I think it's probably quite fascinating. I imagine it's quite interesting to do. And yeah, so how, how did you approach this? Well, first I wanted to ride them in the wet conditions through the winter. Uh, that proved harder with some snow and ice. So yeah. um, I did ride them on a downhill bike, an enduro bike, and an e-bike, just to kind of get time on all of them and to do more back-to-back uh, -back and comparative testing in similar conditions. Thank God you had the e-bike, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, you couldn't have replicated a riding experience without. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Um, and then the, the second part was, yeah, I wanted to pick the more popular choices. Mm -hmm. uh, and like Kaz pointed out in the comments, you know, I knew I was kind of going to get raked over the coals for not comparing apples to, a apples, to yes. apples and oranges, you know. Um, 
with some of the choices. So it's difficult though, because yeah. a mud tire can be so much. And same way, you don't just get a dry tire. Exactly. You, know, you get you get so many other things. I think also mud tires are super interesting because the better they are at puncturing into mud, often that can belie because they actually have quite a hard compound in there. And then when, once you get to actually pushing the tire, those yep. hard compounds can oh, yeah. ring and prang and do all that. Did you notice much difference in the compounds? There were a couple. Uh, yeah, the, the shorty was really good uh, at gripping, you know, that soft Maxxis 3C Max Grip Rubber yeah. was really good on rocks and roots. Same with the Dirty Dan too. And I think that was maybe because they were taller. Yes, uh, they could so, slot into the, the grass. Yeah, yeah. yeah, on the hard pack, they definitely started to squirm a little more. But, you know, each each tire definitely had its place. Um, so I tried to kind of not say that one was better than the other, just mm. where that was the best. Yeah, I think in some ways, you know, like a lot of us, if we were riding real slop, would love the security of a full spike. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because in racing, you know, someone like Snowshoe, there's so much tech that they're reluctant to put a full spike on. Yeah. And funnily yeah. enough, we were, you know, working with the pink bike racing team last year who we'll have on shortly. And so many people were running the Argotala snowshoe and there became this buzz around the pits. And we had people riding for other brands saying, have you got any spare ones? You know, big factory yeah. riders. Yeah. Because almost the belief was the thing that people were, were kind of riding high on. Um, last question. Do you think that mud tires actually hold that much relevance for your average weekend warrior? Do you think that we need you know, you have an Asaga and a DHR too? It does a pretty good job. Would you still be reaching for the mud tire if you weren't racing? I think there'd be a lot of people that don't run mud tires. They'd be surprised if they did put one on and rode it on their regular trails. Obviously, you know, around the world, there are totally different conditions and what's acceptable to be riding in is another point. Yes. Um, yeah, you e-bike, double mud spikes. Yeah. Honestly, the internet's <laughs> going to come for you. <laughs> but it's different on the area, right? Because here, rides. I've spoken to pro riders from Squamish and they say it's a problem because they don't get the slot to practice in yeah and they go yeah. to the Alps for EWS season which is exclusively raced in the wet or EDR you know and they're kind of almost sort of coming undercooked because totally. here everything rides so well in the wet yeah yeah I would agree like here it's more mushy soft stuff and mm. Europe maybe uh, southeast US you have like more of that slippery clay that yeah. doesn't really you don't sink through you kind of slide on top yes, of totally. so yeah, there's a tire for each one and and like I kind of alluded to in the in the roundup or in the comments, we you know, there's too many tires to test. Yes. We could test 20 different tires and conditions could change or bikes could change. So, you know, we try and like hammer out a couple at a time and mm -hmm. there's no rhyme or reason why we picked those six particular ones. It was just that's what we could get our hands on mm. and lead into the comments. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, definitely check that out on the Pink Bike homepage and now it is time we're going to stand up. We're actually going to tag team in for the pink bike racing. So let's get up and give them a warm round of applause and welcome to the show. Cool. Well, here we are and we are welcoming the pink bike racers. It's kind of a bucket boys reunion with Ben Cathro yeah. and Thibaut Lally. Welcome and thank you for joining us in Canada. We got a bigger bucket. Yeah, holy shit, the audio quality is... You know what? Everyone always used to say the audio quality was really bad, but I could never really hear it. It sounded great to me. I mean, we've got some quality sound deadening in here, so uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot better. Are we going to be okay with the aircon? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back into it. So um, what are you guys up to in Canada? Thibaut, is this your, your first time in, in Squamish? Yeah, first time in Squamish. I already came to Whistler a few times, but like, this is the first time in Squamish and uh, I reckon it's a pretty sick place to just train, do some enduro trainings and uh, yeah, having the first time with, uh, for the first team comp, it's good. And do you think, does it rain as much as they say? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely pissing down the last few days. So it was really good to just ride tracks here mm -hmm. and see also how grippy it can be in the rain. It's as well. insane. Yes. Yeah, we were just talking about this. We don't really get the claggy mud mm. that, you know, that you, you get in Europe, it's, I mean, I get all over North America too, but the mud here is, well, the dirt is fantastic in the way. Yes. It's really, really great. All that mud's gone. It's been washed away <laughs> with the rain. Yeah. 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 So and what's your what's your plan this next couple of weeks then, Ben? Yeah, so we are over for building new bikes. We got new bikes received here at the offices. Yeah. So building them up, 
doing a bit of riding, meeting all the people, all the riders, and meeting the people at Pink Bike. And then we're going to go and test some suspension on the famous Prevo. Yeah, you're Prevo. going to have a lot of fun. We're going to go fast. <laughs> you're going to go very, very, very fast. There are some monster hucks there. The dirt's amazing. It's got that gradient, which is like, it's not so steep that you need to drag your brakes down it, but it's, so you, so you let things run, but oh my God, you go unbelievably, unbelievably fast. And you've actually got a new North Vancouverite racer in your ranks. Mm -hmm. So yes. talk us through how, how the Wyatt thing came about. Cool. So I did the classic thing, which is you do what all team managers do and you go on the results website, which is Roots and Rain. Yeah. If you're based in the UK, spend hours, days trawling through results, seeing if you can find like just a little anomaly yes. <laughs> in the matrix because uh, it's easy just to pick who's won all the races, but trying to find the people that have potential and maybe aren't quite fulfilling it, it's a bit harder. So you're going into the split times going, oh yeah, this guy was fast in splits mm -hmm. here, but maybe he's not fit enough and fades towards the bottom or maybe he's inconsistent with his runs and stuff. And why it stood out by having some incredibly fast splits at a few races, also won some races, but wasn't kind of the most consistent, wasn't mm. the best out of uh, all the ones in BC. And uh, he was did some races where I could compare against existing World Cup riders. Yes. So yeah, there was just a few things there. Got a chat with him, seemed like a really cool kid, family seemed really supportive, and that they would benefit from being on a race team because traveling the World Cups, they were wondering how they were going to do it yeah so it's like seems like a great candidate you've got a Luton van with your name on sunshine yeah, it's, yeah. in the back <laughs> <laughs> you'll get an air mattress halfway through the year when we assign budget to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then a pump two races later yeah. now you know last year i i you know I, i'll be staying in canada this year i'm not i'm not coming on the circus with you truthfully i um you know i just bought the wrong coffee order one too many times for a big Big Ben Cathro, and he'd say, <laughs> I said pumpkin spice, not chai latte, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but Tebo, you're kind of, you'll be doing a lot of racing this year. Yes. Choosing, which, we're just going to ignore the aircon, f*** it. Um, <laughs> choosing which races you do, but you're also going to take on a bit more responsibility to kind of do some team management role. Yes. How, how excited are you about that? You've obviously ridden for some big teams. It must be pretty exciting to have a chance to incorporate some of those ideas into Pinkbike. Yes, that's it. So um, I've been in like very few teams, like from very, very small teams, middle sized teams and very big structures like, uh, you know, MS Monoker in the past. So um, yeah, I had the opportunity to see many different way of management uh, in very different way of uh, different structures. I mean, and uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting just to see what will happen this year. Uh, I've done some studies in management as well. So after everything that happens uh, in my uh, short career, uh, I can ask a bit of ex I can have a bit of expense and find a way to to manage it well, hopefully. And um, yeah, I will choose my race just uh, when I feel it and when I will have the time to do it. When the job of team management will be done and done well, then I, I will be able to race. But yeah, I will be first team manager, then a racer. Yeah, well, I think you're going to do, having known, I think you're going to do a fantastic job. I mean, the time with M.A. Mondraker, you're not going to make everyone build like a 47 paneled pit, are you? That takes six days to put up. It's like the building of the Gaza pyramids, that thing, as impressive as it is. Yes. Um, now, Thibaut, I haven't actually told you this before filming because I wanted to, to surprise you. But every week we, we put someone in the stand and normally it's for some ill-founded view. But this week we're putting you in the stand because we want to get some industry gossip. So, <laughs> cue title card. So, Tebow, Red Bull Hardline. Yes. Beautiful weekend in beautiful, beautiful British countryside. And I heard that you, you single-handedly destroyed the interior of a British heritage mansion. And I just want to know what... what Dude, that's that's mine and ben, Ben's culture, you know. What ha what actually happened there? Yeah. And was it as bad as the the title grabbing headline led to suggest? Well, you know, um, I will explain this later. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, our line is um, can be very stressful, uh, and when you come back to the castle, <laughs> you just need to dress for things. Now, um, <laughs> honestly, that uh, yeah, every year is a bit of a mess at the castle. Just to be honest, yeah. Um, you know, it's just a bunch of really silly riders all together ready to go eat some 80 feet jumps or something yeah. like that. So 
the atmosphere is just to be crazy. Yes. In every. Yeah, because yeah, every... before you played rugby, you've had like, yeah. full contact rugby the day before doing the that gnarliest track and like, you know, racing one of the gnarliest tracks in the world. Yeah, that's it. That, that was in 19. But uh, yeah, this year it was more like big parties and everything during the nights in between the, yeah, the training and race. So, you know, Ireland is not just a, a race. It's an atmosphere. It's everything that happens <laughs> also behind the scenes. It sounds so, like Vietnam or something. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I heard, I wasn't at the final party uh, at the cathedral, but because I had to go for my exams, uh, like in south of France. Yeah. So I had just to take a taxi, a flight and everything straight after my restaurant. Yeah. But yeah, I've seen some stories, some WhatsApp groups, uh, just wild. videos, and it was really wild. Uh, and I'm really not surprised that we got banned from this <laughs> castle. I think we need to hide that fire extinguisher from him. Yeah, because, yes. <laughs> yeah, Ben, you know, how, I find it amazing. Well, do you think, one, do you think you'd ever be keen on Hardline? No. No. What, what puts you off? I'm not a big jumper, to be honest. Like, I like the thrill of speed and, like, hitting lines perfectly and getting exit speed out of corners but huge jumps scare the shit out of me mm, small jumps scare the shit out of me so i can only imagine do you think though that like that's what because to be honest i, I know that red bull are, are are teaming up with crankworks to sort of make a make a maybe a more holistic coverage around the crankworks races mm -hmm. i i heard a rumor that they were actually looking at doing a hardline series and mm -hmm. i was kind of surprised they didn't do you think that's what downhill mountain biking would really benefit from you know, do you think there's there's appetite for just huge? And is it in, you know, is it in the riders' interest as well to send huge jumps and sketchy courses regularly? This guy seems keen. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I well, only because he gets the volivants and swinging from chandeliers <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it it would be a good thing just to see an Ireland series. Honestly, like just to because World Cups is like just going fast as fast as you can from uh, A point to B point, mm -hmm. and Ireland is more like same but with very very sketchy things that maybe some riders in the world can't do mm. i mean world cup uh, circuit if you're not going like uh, at the racer space you can still down this track mm. you know mm. our line it's not possible so um, well i think they should have a test that if i can ride it then it's too easy they just send me i mean i'm open uci send me to every World Cup, you see, and I'd be like, no, I got down it, lads, you've, you've <laughs> it. <laughs> True. Well, <laughs> more danger. More like, danger. Yeah, well, off camber, like, d d dig it away. But do you think that Take danger is correlates with entertainment? Well, yeah, of course it does. Yeah, because you like, thought, like, I mean, I don't know, I think of, like, Leger with, you know, 2019, seeing Amory Perron just destroy flat grass turns. Mm. And that was probably the most exciting thing I saw all season. Hmm. Oh, Do you know what I mean? That was pretty dangerous. It, it was, was quite dangerous, actually. Yeah. He, was, that yeah. paddock. he was losing traction on every corner. <laughs> like, there's there's always a thrill to danger. All the extreme sports that people watch, you see some people go into sports and they're just there to watch someone have a massive accident. Mm. Like uh, like NASCAR, and they're all flipping cheering for a big crash and stuff. Yeah. So it, it's, it's built into human nature that danger is quite exciting. It is quite exciting. Yeah. Adrenaline. Yeah. It's a drug. It's a drug. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally. So um, you head for Vancouver Island tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yes. Are you doing any racing before? Because they have the World Cup test event. Is that just for elite teams? Or is that? Um, it's mainly for elite teams. I think a few other people may be going, but uh, we're double booked because Sea Otter is on. Oh, and, classic. Uh, we want to ride down a gentle slope. Yeah, talking about paddocks. Yeah. It's 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 gonna be perfect. So you got Sea Otter, and then is then you have a bit of a time off. Everyone kind of go home, recharge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a big, big kind of area of time off. It's like a month and a bit, and that'll be getting all the race bikes ready, some testing at home for the riders, um, testing new suspension, which could be really interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just preparing for the first yes. round in June. Preparing in general. And, and final question: with your strong placing in Fort William last year. Are you lobbying yet for a position on the GB World Champ squad? Yeah, I'm going to earn it. You're going to earn it? I'm going to try. I was going to say, Ben, let's, <laughs> let's stick to lobbying. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, let's, um, we need some sort of petition 
Because you would, you you smashed it. Yeah, no, I, my my goal is to try and get a selection, but like GB France, stacked. Australia, so stacked. Mm. So mm. I'm putting that out there to almost like give myself an unrealistic pressure to try and perform. Dude, I think yeah. last time you were in those Vince Neil tighty whities I think we go a size down this year, <laughs> and I reckon you're in the top twenty. Get the smalls out. Get those <laughs> ca- cathro extensions on the bottom. The cathro extension. It's, it's a thing. <laughs> it is. No, it's happening. Now, thank you very much for coming on. Thank Between you. Two Berms, the new yes. rebranded show that was riding on so much success. We got like six views on the last one. We might get the double digits for this one. Unbelievable. And I really hope you enjoy your time in Canada and stay sort of dry. It's yes. not, that's not happening. <laughs> Mega. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks. You. Cheers.